This is lesson 9-1, which is solving quadratic equations using graphs and tables. Our essential question is, how can graphs and tables help you solve quadratic equations? So the first thing we're going to look at is talking about the x-intercepts of the graph and the solutions to a quadratic function that is set equal to 0. So if we're finding the solutions, of the quadratic equation x squared minus 16 equals 0. You can see that the solution to that system is going to be where your quadratic equation, so y equals x squared minus 16, where the graph equals, where y is equal to 0. So that is the two points that are your x-intercepts. We can call them x-intercepts, we can call them zeros, we can call them solutions. So you can see negative 4 and positive 4 are the two spots where your graph crosses the x-axis. And so those are the solutions to the equation x squared minus 16 equals 0. Okay, the next example, we have x squared minus 14x plus 49. So you can see this graph only touches the x-axis in one at one point, which is the point 7, 0. So we would say that this graph, or this equation, has one solution, um, and there's only one x-intercept. And then this graph, you'll see, doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So this would be a situation where we would say no solution. And when you get into Algebra 2, we'll talk about um, kind of how we, how we deal with um, numbers to create quadratics that do not have a x-intercept. So before we go on to our next example, I just want to show you how you can graph these to determine how many solutions they have. So if you go to Desmos, remember Desmos, you can do the Desmos app or you can go to Desmos, D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, uh, the website, and we could type in x and then go down here and get the x squared minus 16. So that was our first graph that we looked at. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and we can see the two points. You can click those points. Um, those are my two solutions, negative 4, 0, and positive 4, 0. Then I could graph the second one, which was x squared minus 14x plus 49. And you can see that that shows our 1 solution or one point where it hits the x-axis. So you'll notice I'm not putting equals zero. I'm just putting the function. You could even write y equals if you want to, and you'll get the same graph. And then the last one we had was x squared plus 3x plus 7. So you can see that one has a vertex, but that does not cross the x-axis, so we would have no solutions. So that's how you can visually see using Desmos. Okay, so the next example is how can you use a table to find solutions? Um, so we're going to look at x squared minus 7x plus 6. So I'm going to show you how to do this on Desmos as well. So I'm going to clear this. So it is y equals x squared minus 7x plus 6. So you see that gives us our graph. But if we want a table, you can go up here to the the settings and you'll see there's a table. So I'm going to hit convert to table and you'll notice it puts it into a table for me. And if I want more points, so maybe I want three and four, five, six, I can add more points to the table. So what we're observing from the table is we can also tell those zeros or our x-intercepts from the table. So you'll see here the point zero, oops, I don't want 0, 6, sorry, this point right here, 1, 0. And then if I go down here, 6, 0. If we click it on the graph, 1, 0 and 6, 0. I can see those from the table as well. So I'm looking at where is my function equal to 0 in those two spots. You can even kind of approximate where the vertex is going to happen because you can see these, this is, you see, start to see the symmetry in the table as well negative 6 and negative 6, negative 4 and negative 4, 0 and 0. So we know that the vertex is probably happening between 3 and 4. Okay, 
So then the next one that we're looking at is 3x squared. So y equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. I'm going to change this to a table. And you can see that I can see one zero, but I don't see the other one. And we know that there is a zero between, oops, lost my screen there, between um, zero and one, because this ch value changes from negative to positive. You can see here, negative, positive. So we know there's a zero in there, you can see approximately. So Desmos helps us. We can add points to our table. So if we know it's between zero and one, I could add in a 0 0.5 for x, so a halfway between. And then I can still see it's going to be between those. So I'm going to add in another. I'm just hitting enter to add a new row, maybe 0 0.25, getting closer. So it's between these two. And then if we added 0 0.33, you can see the more threes I go out, so we know that that is our, our 0 0.333, so it's a third. Um, I could even write it as a fraction, a third, and then you would see the zero. So that's how we can add points into the table to, um, to find those zeros. Okay, and our last example says Anastasia hits her golf ball off the tee. The height of the golf ball is modeled by the function f of x equals negative 5x squared plus 25x plus 1, where x is the number of seconds after the golf ball is hit. How long is the golf ball in the air? So we can graph this. So I'm going to leave this off to the side. I'm also going to come over here and show how I can graph this. So I'm going to type in f of x equals negative 5x squared. 25x plus 1. You can see my graph looks a little different because they have um, zoomed into just that 1 through 5. But the nice thing about Desmos is I can click on that x-intercept so I can find the two x-intercepts. We know that the graph starts at a height of 1. That's my y-intercept. And then we want to know how long it's in the air. So that's 5.04, which you can see right here. So we would say that the ball is in the air about five seconds. So you can use the graphs to interpret the answers and approximate solutions. Okay, so that is 9-1.